بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقدوتنا وقرة عيننا ونور قلوبنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the choicest of blessings upon our master Sayyidina, our beloved Habibina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. We begin all actions by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in, and in his name. For our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us that actions that do not begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and actions that do not begin with the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is void of benefit. And we, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us since we began in His name that some benefit can be taken from the few words that we have to share with the jama'ah this afternoon. The topic that I've chosen to speak on briefly this afternoon is a commentary on a chapter of the Qur'an that is so often recited within our masajid and within our communities. The chapter Surah Al-Adiyah wal Dabha uh, it's a chapter that is often recited yet the, the meaning very often is ignored and if a person should live his life by the surah if a person should adopt the important lessons that one takes from the surah it, it, it makes for a better human being it makes for a better Muslim it makes for a better community and society just acting on a single verse within the surah never mind the entire surah would, would see the communities of the world change and how, how, how in need is our communities of change in the time that we are living in? How much change do we need? You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be part of the change that takes place within the societies of the world. The Surah al adiyat al recited from beginning to end so that we can familiarize ourselves with the verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahi rahman rahim wal adiyat dabha فالموريات قدحا فالمغيرات صبحا فأثرن به نقعا فوسطن به جمعا إن الإنسان لربه لكنود وإنه على ذلك لشهيد وإنه لحب الخير لشديد أفلا يعلم إذا بعثر ما في القبور وحصل ما في الصدور إن ربهم بهم يومئذ لخبير صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله نبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the verse taking an oath by the adiyat An adiyat refers to an animal that is racing And the commentators are actually debated by what animals is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually taking an oath because there were two famous anim- an animals within the Arabian Peninsula that used to race people who'd race with camels and people who'd race with horses. So is al at horses or is it camels? And most of the commentators, including the great scholar Ibn Jarir at tabari may Allah be pleased with him, they, 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 they concluded that without a doubt what is meant is horses, khuyul or khayl, stallion. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says dabha and dabha we translate as panting and what panting means is breathing heavy while galloping it breathes heavy and this is not the quality of a camel a camel when it races it does not breathe deeply and heavily unlike a horse and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thus tells us that he is referring to horses when Allah takes an oath by them وَالْعَادِيَاتِ dabha by these horses and, and not any horses but horses that the companions of the Allah ta'ala anhuma are riding in, in the early mornings in the early hours of morning when they fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is taking an oath by, by those horses by these racing horses when they are panting and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on saying that فَالْمُورِيَاتِ قَدْحَ and, and the first thing that the verse tries to sketch by us is the importance of the uh, drawing a picture it's a picture of companions sacrificing companions fighting in the way of Allah Companions, the horses became important not to, to, to an extent that Allah takes an oath by these horses but it's not necessarily the horses it's because of the purpose that they are fulfilling and they're fulfilling the purpose of jihad peace of Allah 
they're fulfilling the purpose and our Prophet told us the objective behind Holy who the objective behind fighting in the way of Allah is not just about victory and spoils of war. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us that it's, well, I, he told us that the objective behind fighting is the one who fights, the best person who fights in his way is that person لِتَكُونَ كَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ هِيَ الْعُلْيَا so that the kalima, the, the word of Allah لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so that that kalima can be held high in the minds and in the hearts of people so Allah is taking an oath by these horses because they are filling a very important function they are filling that function they are carrying the best of men the companions رضي الله تعالى عنهم and they are fighting in the way of Allah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues drawing this picture of the companions in the early hours of morning riding and galloping on horses fighting in the way of Allah فَالْمُورِيَاتِ قَدْحَا the producers of sparks when striking. You know, it's all, all about the picture again. So, we, we know that horses, they have, they have hooves, shoes, horse shoes that is made out of steel. And when that steel strikes against a rock in the desert, because desert is not just soft sand as, as we tend to imagine at times. Sometimes desert is hard rock. And when the, the steel of the shoes strike that rock, it gives off a spark. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَالْمُورِيَاتِ قَدْحَا and the producers of sparks when striking. فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ subaha And the charges at dawn. Because the companions are riding these horses. They are attacking and charging the enemy in the early hours. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that and drawing a, a vivid picture for you and I. فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ subaha فَأَثَرْنَ بِهِ نَقَعَ Stirring up there by clouds of dust. You know, so as if you can, you can picture a cavalry, you, you can picture... A, a, a group of horses galloping, striking the hooves, striking rock and giving of sparks and giving of a dust. And on their backs are these great men, the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, with, with turbans on their heads and swords along their sides. All with the objective of Allah must become predominant in this world. People have to know who Allah is. People need to accept the message of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is what Allah is, is, is putting in our minds. When we recite the surah, وَالْعَادِيَاتِ ضَرْحَا فَالْمُورِيَاتِ قَدْحَا فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ صُبْحَا فَأَثَرْنَ بِهِ نَقَعَا فَوَسَطْنَ بِهِ جَمْعَا You know, so this, this picture, of, we, we, we don't appreciate what it was for companions, that the, the sacrifice that they made, all of them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them, and therefore our, our scholars are, are clear when they say that none of the, the time of companions can be compared to the companions, رضي الله تعالى عنه. None. The most virtuous people ever to walk on this earth is the Anbiya alayhi musalatu wasalam. The Anbiya, the Prophets, the Messengers. And after them, the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ashab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the, the picture that the surah sketches so clearly and beautifully. beautifully, Fighting in the way of Allah. So the, the great scholar Abdullah ibn Mubarak, may Allah be pleased with him, who was a great muhaddith. A, a, a scholar of hadith Abdullah ibn Mubarak was a, a poet he was also a, a businessman he was a student of the great sheikh Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala and, and many said that he followed the mother of Imam Abu Hanifa but he, he, he used to spend he used to divide his time up into three one third of his year he would dedicate to teaching hadith another third of his year would be dedicated to business so that he can earn money by his own hand, the Prophet said the best money that a man has is that what he earned through his hands. Not money that someone gave you or that you, you, you went begging. No. He, he, a third of his year was dedicated to business so that he earned enough money in that one third of the year to take care of him for the balance of the year. So four months business and the next eight months no business. Teach hadith for the next four months and for the last four months he used to spend it fighting in the way of Allah. And how far have we drifted from this example? Today I don't spend 4 months earning, I spend 12 months earning. And no months teaching, no months learning, no months studying. And no months do I spend striving in the way of Allah. Da'wah illallah. And da'wah does not belong to one party or to one jama'ah. Da'wah is the duty of all of us. So Abdullah Mubarak, a beautiful example. 4 months he did business, he earned enough, bare minimum to cover him for that year, and then he stops working. The next four months he's going to spend teaching people hadith and the next four months he's going to fight in the way of Allah. So he, he wrote a poem to a friend of his 
one of the great saints in his time, Fudayl ibn Iyad. And he was trying to draw a similar picture to him. The picture that Allah draws here at the beginning of Surah Al-Adiyah. He drew a similar picture. So he, he said to his friend, Fudayl ibn Iyad, he used to travel between Makkah and Medina. And he used to spend the, his day and night praising and performing salah and reciting Quran. So he called him, Ya Abid al-Haramayn. A oh, oh, worshipper of the two sacred sanctuaries. Yeah, and this poem is to play on the on our, on our radio station, Voice of the K. I don't hear it any longer, or that's perhaps because I don't listen to the radio station, but Ya Abid al Haramain, a worshipper of the two harams. Lo absartana, should you see us here on the battlefield? La alimta annaka fil ibadati talabu. You you would know that you are playing in your worship. And the real worship is here facing the enemy of Allah. La alimta annaka fil ibadati talabu man kana. يتعب خيله في باطل فخيولنا يوم الصبيحة تتعب You are one you are tiring your horse in, 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 in that which there is no benefit في باطل While our horses when they wake up in the morning they are already tired because we're traveling all day and striving all day and fighting all day فخيولنا يوم الصبيحة تتعب ريح العبير لكم you, you have the scent of musk and the scent of oud and the, the beautiful perfumes in Mecca and Medina ريح العبير لكم وَنَحْنُ عَبِيرُنَا But the scent that we find رَهَجُ السَّنَابِكِ وَالْغُبَارُ الْأَطْيَبُ The scent we find here on the battlefield is the scent of, of, of dust غُبَارُ الْأَطْيَبُ we, The scent of the wolves striking those rocks and the sparks that we find That's our scent You know and, 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 and eventually he goes on to say that He goes on to say that uh, He says that هذا كتاب الله ينتق بيننا. This is the book of Allah judging between us. This is the Quran judging between us. هذا كتاب الله ينتق بيننا. ليس الشهيد بميت لا يكتبه. That person who dies in the way of Allah, that person who dies with da'wa as his purpose, calling people to Allah, he is not dead. ليس الشهيد بميت. He is not dead. He might have left this physical world, but he is not dead. He is alive in his grave. He is alive. And Allah states this in the Quran. In the Rabbihim yurzaqun. They are alive receiving sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know so, uh, Abdullah Mubarak, I quote this poem because he, he sketches that, he, 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 he takes this meaning further that Allah speaks of in the beginning of Surah Al-Adiyat. That beautiful picture of companions on the, on, on, on the back of the horses striving and fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a beautiful sight. That Allah takes an oath by it and Allah says, buy these racing horses. Panting, stirring up dust, creating sparks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by them and that, in that alone is a, is a, is a, is a lesson. But the, the point Allah is coming to has not yet been made. Allah draws this beautiful picture of companions striving in His way. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by it. But what is Allah taking an oath? Allah is taking an oath by this normally when a person takes an oath, he says, by Allah, so and so, you should do this and this. Right? So Allah took the oath, but what is Allah going to tell us? So Allah took this, this lengthy oath, describing this beautiful picture of companions fighting in the way. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a statement, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُود Indeed, mankind is ungrateful. Indeed, mankind to his Lord is ungrateful. He, he rejects the favors of Allah. He, he doesn't pay attention to Allah's favors. Al Imam Al Hassan Al Basri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Al Kafur, he rejects Al Ladi Ya'uddu Al Masa'ib wa Yansa Ni'ama Rabbi. He's constantly counting all the difficulties that he has in his life. And he forgets about the favor that Allah has given him. He forgets about the Ni'am of Allah. We forget that Allah has granted us energy. He's made it possible for us to be here. He's, he's given us another day that we woke up. He's given us fresh air to breathe in. These are the favors of Allah. Allah has taken oath by these horses, the companions, the fighting, the dust. Man is ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we need to make sure we're not from those people who are ungrateful. We need to show our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we show Him our things by, by worshipping Him. We show, him, we show Him our things by making His dhikr. 
We show him, we show him our things by performing salah, by being in the masjid, by attaching ourselves to this deen. That's how we show our things. If the adhan goes off and I'm still at home, it means I'm not showing things to Allah. If I'm not praying my salah, it means I'm not showing things to Allah. If my Quran is on my rack since Ramadan, it means I'm not showing things to Allah. And I'm guilty. Inna al-insana li rabbihi lakanoon. A, a Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in an authentic hadith narrated by my Muslim from Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala an that Yusbih ala kulli sulama min ahadikum sadaqah. For every sulama, for every sulama, the, the scholars, they, when they discuss this word sulama, they say, for every joint. Some scholars say for every bone. For every function within your body, you have to give a charity. The, the bones aside, function aside, just focusing on joints, our Prophet and, and this is really a miracle because our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 1400 years ago in a hadith narrated by a Muslim, he says that each one of you have 360 joints. And he has to give charity for each joint every day. And, and today when, when scientists study the human body, they don't find anything more than, than, than 360 joints. There, there, there's, actually, there's actually three types of joints in the body. Movable, immovable and something else. And what our Prophet was referring to was the movable joint. And there's exactly 360. Of which... 83 or some others to be found in the skull alone. You know, so how does the Prophet do a count of 360 joints? <laughs> These are all things. Our, our faith don't depend on whether the word of Muhammad agrees with science or not. Our reliance is in the word of Muhammad, not in science. Whether Because science changes. Today science says one thing, tomorrow it says another thing. But we stick to Muhammad وسلم, because he is what he speaks from, from Allah. Can Allah ever be incorrect? No, Allah cannot be. To believe Allah is incorrect is disbelief. So he said that you have 360 joints. That's how he said for every sulama, for every function, you have to give charity. La ilaha illallah. You know, we, we, we're conducting the 99 names of Allah. A course that we're conducting Tuesdays in the masjid of which there's two classes left. You know, and, and, and we, we, in one of those classes we spoke about the, the function of the eye. The function of the eye. And what I recall from the function of the eye is that in the front of the eye you, you have the cornea, you have the lens and you have the pupil and all of them, all, the function of all three could, could, could easily be described as it allows one to focus, it, it, it governs the amount of light that comes into the retina but the important part of the eye is the retina so once the, the front part of the eye governs the amount of light and the sharpness and the focus and what have you the, the light, the sun's light or, that comes onto an image reflects through these cornea and the lens and the, until it reaches the retina and inside of the retina there's 6 to 7 million light sensitive cells six to seven million light sensitive cells. They divide them up into cones and rods. And when the light shines onto an object and it reflects into my eye, that picture gets imprinted in my retina. It says, you know, through these cells the image gets imprinted in my retina but it's upside down. And then I have what, what they call the optic nerve, which is something like a, another few million nerve threads that take these images from the written and brings it to my brain. And when it reaches my brain, my brain turns the image upside, uh, turns it the proper way around. It comes upside down and the brain turns it the right way around. And then I see you. And all of that happened how quickly? Every time you're seeing me, you're looking at me, it's happening every split second, the whole process. That, that six to seven million light sensitive cells within your retina your, your cornea and your lens and your pupil is all adjusting and focusing and allowing the exact amount of light to come into your eye that is required for the retina to create the image and the optic nerve which is a million li- uh, 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 nerve threads is bringing that message to you and it's happening over and over and over and over every split second. Sh- should we not be thankful to Allah? What, 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 what hand does the scientist have in there? He is fortunate that Allah has given him knowledge to discover how it works. 
and that's as far as his ability goes. Should we not be thankful? You know, to, today that the camera, the camera plays a very similar role to the, to the, to the eye. It's based on the same principle. But uh, you know, I, I'm sitting with my phone. My phone has a camera, and my battery is about to die. You know, with iPhone, your battery is always about to die. But that besides the point. The battery dies. Give it a few hours and it's dead. What about the battery of my eye? Where do I have to recharge that battery? Should I not be thankful? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inna al-insana li rabbihi laka nur And we're commenting on the verses of Surah Al-Adiyat Man with regards the favors of his Lord is ungrateful So our Prophet he said for every function in your body you have to give a charity and then he told us what he means by charity. It doesn't mean you have to empty out your bank account every morning. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, كُلُّ تَسْبِيحَةٍ لَكَ صدقة. Every time you recite, subhanallah, it's a sadaqah. Every time you recite, la ilaha illallah, every time you recite, alhamdulillah, it's a sadaqah. Whenever you perform salawat ala rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's a sadaqah. So how much charity have we been giving? And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, that what will suffice you regarding all that functions in your body, all that million nerve cells and what have you, what will suffice you, all of that, if you are to pray two raka'at of Salat al-Duha in the morning. Salat al-Duha is a prayer that you make once the sun has risen to the extent of a spear's length. So you look at the horizon, when the sun rises above the horizon, and you can picture a spear between the sun and the horizon, that is the time of Duha. Some call it Ishraq. And you can continue praying Salat al-Duha till the waqt of Dhuhr enters. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, pray two raka'at of Salat al-Duha and it suffices you for all the favors that Allah has given you. So how many of us, how many of us have, have, have heard the hadith before? And how many of us are practicing on it? How many of us know the power of Salat al-Duha? And how many of us read Salat al-Duha? إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَ نُورِ May Allah not make us from those who are ungrateful. May Allah make us from those who are constantly showing our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to finish the surah so we actually covered the entire surah. وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيدٍ And indeed, he is that a witness. Man himself witnesses that he is ungrateful. He himself witnesses it. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٍ His love for, for wealth is intense, Allah said. His love for wealth is intense. The problems of the world today is because of our love for this world. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he predicted this 1400 years ago when he said that the time is close where the nations of the world will surround the Ummah of Muhammad, will surround my Ummah like wild beasts around their prey. And then the companion said, I mean, kill it, nakhna yawm. And then he said, because we will be few, ya Rasulullah. The Prophet said, no, you'll be many. There was never a time in the history of this world that there were so many Muslims like there is today. There was never a time that you found so many Hufar like you find today. There was never a time when you found so many scholars like you find today. But why is it... Why are we constantly degenerating? Why is there no uprising? Why, why are we not the superpowers of the world? So the Prophet said, La, but Antum Kathir, you will be many. But the nation of the world will be oppressing you. And then the Prophet وسلم, he gives the answer. He said, Allah will place in your heart Al-Wahl. Allah will place Wahl in your heart. And when the companions, they, they said, Ya Rasulullah, what is Wahl? He said, Allah will place the love of this dunya in your heart. And you will place the fear of death in your heart. Companions do not love this war. Ibn Mubarak worked four months, it was enough for him. Today I, I can never do that. Today there are those that have not, never mind enough money for this year, and for the next year, and for the next ten years, and for the rest of his life. But no, he still has to work. Why? He worried about his children, and then his grandchildren, and his great grandchildren, and Allah knows best. I, I always say that if you if you continue working even though you have enough finances to, to
to take care of you for the rest of your life. Then, then work for the community, work for the masjid. Work for madrasas, for madaris. See to the upliftment of communities, not only from a, what we term an Islamic paradigm, not just masjid and madrasa, there are other community projects. There are neighborhood watches that we can incre- increase safety. There's Uncle Sayyid's uh, vegetable garden that he's been trying to get off for so many years. Th- there are so many good things that a Muslim can do in a community and this is not, it's not Western ideas. These are things that Islam approves of. Safety within a community. The office in Islam, there used to be a special, in Islamic countries, there used to be a, a dedicated office known as Hisbah. That used to see that to the safety of people within the streets and within their homes. The, their function was, if they saw anyone doing wrong, they, they would deal with him accordingly. A special office. This, this is before the Western system created policemen and, 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 and oh, police stations and what have you, scorpions and so many other different names. The Islamic State had this office where they used to see to amen the, the safety of people. And, and we can all play a part in, of, in this. We need to play a part. <laughs> May Allah allow us to, to wake up us wake up from the slumber that we are in. May Allah allow us to wake up. وَإِنَّهُ لَحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٌ أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُ إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْكُبُورِ Does man not know when the contents, that which is in the grave, will be resurrected? Referring to man himself. Does he not know that day will come when he will be resurrected from his grave? And he'll have no clothing, he'll have no money, no car. Nothing. Just you. Nothing to take recourse to. No father that can help. No uncle. No nephew. No imam. No sheikh. Alone. Before Allah. Do you not know that day is coming? Do you not know that day when you're going to stand up from your grave and everyone will be naked? You'll have nowhere to go. Nothing to do. And the only thing that will benefit you is this. Your presence here in the masjid today. The only thing that will benefit you is the vicar that you attended. Does man not know that that day is coming? And that within the breast are obtained. إِنَّ رَبَّهُمْ بِهِمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لَخَبِيرٌ Allah ends with this, this beautiful chapter in the Quran by saying indeed their Lord was them on that day is fully acquainted. Allah knows your ins and outs. Allah knows what's in your mind. There's nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing that you have done will be hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, so these are, are some lessons from this beautiful chapter with Adiyat al We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to, to benefit from the surah from the lessons that we've taken from the surah. May we implement it in our lives and become sources of change. Sources of change. And I want to conclude, you know, in, in, in the spirit of change. We, we are hosting a, a spiritual retreat that will be taking place this weekend from after Asr Friday today until after Asr on Sunday where we'll be having a number of classes and discourses, spiritual discourses, gatherings of dhikr, gatherings of salawat, you know, a full day where you can dedicate yourself to Allah. Days that will count on your favor on that day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. On that day when you resurrected from your, from your grave. That will count in your favor and not against you. You know, so we want to encourage all to be part of the program. It starts immediately after Asr. We start with the registration and orientation at the Kramat Masjid in Makassar. Um, the official program begins on half an hour before Maghrib. And uh, it continues till Sunday. Asr, we, we ask everybody to try to be part of the entire program. If you really, really, for some reason or other, cannot be part of the entire program, then at least visit during the course of the weekend. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all greatly. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.